I looked at it one day and said, you know, we have the horseshoe. That spells, we can, we can, that spells horse. Hold on, Omaha Raz, the later better. And then some people that didn't like uh, Raz, they said, why don't we play shoe? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we were either playing horse or shoe during the World Series. So you're around for the, the, how, the how it got named. The, I named it. You the named horse. it, okay. Yes. <laughs> Me and my buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah, I know it's rude to be bragging. They never catching a slack. Me and my buddy. All right, guys, uh, welcome back to another Table One podcast. Uh, our host, Justin Young, Arthur Parman, and Hello. a very special guest, a Poker Hall of Famer, Maury Escondani. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, I, I pronounced the last name, last name correct? You, I, okay. You, you did it better than my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've always wanted to make sure I have been, but uh, in all honesty, uh, I Pick the most awkward time to ask you on on a recorded stream. <laughs> I, I could have just easily asked you about five minutes ago, but I decided to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> good timing, good timing, buddy. <laughs> no, all good. All right, so uh, typically on our podcast, uh, the main thing we like to do, uh, to start anyway, is to kind of find out how you got into the gambling world or the poker world. Like, I, I read uh, that you were in Oregon and you decided to move to Vegas in like sometime in the 80s or something like that. Right. Uh, what was the reason? Like, what... What was the goal? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. I try to try to. We have guess. an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I I try to uh, sum it up best I could. Uh, I um, graduated from Portland State in 1979. Uh, you know, I was business major. I got married at that time, but uh, I had like like a couple of job interviews uh, that. I felt like wasn't going anywhere. In the meantime, you know, like uh, many foreign students here, uh, it's still the same, I'm assuming, although this was almost 50 years ago. Uh, it took a while before you had work permits, before you had your green cards, before all that stuff. They didn't require green cards to sit at the poker table and make money. <laughs> so, so when, when did you move here from, you're from Iran, correct? Yes. Okay, when did you move here from 1974. Iran? 1974. Okay, so you were a teenager when you moved out here. Oh, okay, yes. wow. And um, I got introduced to poker through some friends while I was at Portland State. Crossed the state in Vancouver, Washington, there were some poker rooms. And I became pretty known there quickly and started playing by uh, like, uh, uh, I think it was 25 cents ante, uh, $2 limit, five card stud. That was the very first game. I knew how to play poker, but I, it was draw game, like what they call mm -hmm. short deck, but in the form of a draw uh, from my childhood. It was just a game that I was, somebody taught me how to play and I fell in love with it. Well, who taught you how to play? Uh, a cousin of mine. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, we actually, Give him some credit. We actually weren't even allowed to have uh, a deck of cards. So we, we cut, oh. cut it out of a shoebox. We made our own deck. Okay. Yes. You think those cards were marked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure I was seven That's years funny. old. He was 14, I'm sure. <laughs> I knew exactly when I had three jacks. <laughs> the bigger the hand, the bigger the card. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, um, so I started playing just for fun, you know, once in a while, maybe every once every other week, you know, uh, driving over to Vancouver and playing uh, the five card stud. And then slowly the game, the stud game became seven card stud and everybody yep. fell in love with seven card stud, more action and all that. And then Holden was introduced and the whole world stopped. That was the game. <laughs> Play so much faster, the community card aspect of it was fascinating, you know, people... I mean, I still remember so many times uh, the guy would turn over his hand when there was like a nut straight on board and he, he tried to throw his hand away. People said, don't, 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 you have a straight. And no matter what the board was from there on, like you would have ace high flush, the guy would turn over his hand and says, do I have an ace high flush too? No, you don't. Come on. That's, that's like art when he plays Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. Like just at the end of it, he's like, huh? huh? Right. <laughs> Someone here is going to be able to read this hand. Yeah. So I... Got a job as a, uh, a financial advisor, uh, basically like filling out loan papers and, and, and things like that. It was really close to the offices of, uh, to the card rooms in mm -hmm. Vancouver, Washington. Oh, okay. And they paid me for like a, a couple of months. It was a startup business. And then they couldn't pay me anymore. They okay. couldn't like, they couldn't pay my salary. <laughs> but when I got up five o'clock, I'd just go to the poker room there yeah. and play 
at that at that moment was five dollar limit hold'em, and I I would just if I lost two days in a month I was depressed. <laughs> I mean seriously, the games were that soft. Games or... were that okay, soft. I got you. They just wanted to play. Everybody wanted to have fun. Like I said, mm-hmm. do I have a side flush too? Yeah. You know, I like know. I mean, it was. It sounds like you just need to know what beats what at showdown, and you, you're <laughs> yeah. gonna win in the games. <laughs> yeah, that that was it. So I played for almost six months there. Um, working in the mornings, you know, like five o'clock going on, and then they couldn't pay me for the four months of it. And then my wife, she was the main reason, said, why are you keep going to the <laughs> office? Why don't you just go play? Starts there you at go. the poker room, the card room opens at 10 o'clock in the morning, and they close at 2, p- 2 a.m. Why don't you just go play at 10 o'clock in the morning? What a great wife you have. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was she was the one that like, just do that, just do that. Because I would go home and, and separate the hundreds and the twenties and the tens. It was like Or so she was fun. getting you out of the house, huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's how I got started. So I started playing poker, you know, just solely poker. And then um, uh, after two or three years, two years of doing this, decided to open up a business. And uh, it was a food manufacturing business. Didn't go well. Lost a ton of money. That went from 1981, 82, 83, 84, somewhere there. Like those three years was just really, really devastated me. So what motivated you to to start the business and why food manufacturing? Well, because uh, food manufacturing, because I was bringing a lot of families from from Iran. Iran. And I wanted them to be involved. They mm-hmm. weren't. I, I couldn't say, okay, let's everybody come on over. Let's play yeah. poker. That's what we're gonna do. This is the ace I flush. Do the US of a. Yeah, <laughs> you could have taught them to be dealers, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's like, true. Like just about every immigrants that come here, yeah. you know, like they're, uh, you know, uh, the, first the kind of food is, they yeah. make. That like uh, you'll see it, and it is, it's a very tough way of you know making it happen. But we really worked at it, and we worked hard at it for three years before we closed it. And uh, like I said, it put me, uh, it put me almost 300,000 in the hole. Jeez. Oh man. So I, I came to Vegas with a bankroll of minus 300,000. You know how people always come here, they have a bankroll. <laughs> so, yeah. Usually when they're done with Vegas, they're minus 300,000. <laughs> uh, and uh, I came here because again, a friend of mine that, that uh, is still playing, Yosh Nakano, I knew him from Oregon, and he encouraged me. He says, "Just come here. You know, you'll, you you yeah, you don't understand. You have to come here. You know, you'll make money here." Like he knew, you know, like we knew each other from Vancouver. We played poker together. So I came here in 1984 and uh, went to Stardust mm-hmm. and played that one week for 80 hours. I, I actually played 80 <laughs> hours, and believe it or not, uh, that, that 80 hours I made. I think like over six thousand dollars, and I and I called home. I said, "This is it. Never I mean, coming back." I guess this is the only way we're gonna make money. To my wife, and uh, went home, rented a house, went home, and got a U-Haul, got everything in there, uh, attached our little Honda to it, and off we were coming down. <laughs> coming down, 180 days away from even on that 300k. Six <laughs> k a day That's keeps the loan sharks away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we flew, we flew out here, uh, they, they flew out here a week later, and uh, uh, I started playing. And when I say I started playing, I started playing. I'm not kidding you guys. I played maybe, um, uh, I, I, I played every day, including weekends, for probably nonstop for 20 years. Jeez. 20 non-stop. years, wow. How old were you when you moved down here? Uh, it was like 29. Yeah, oh, it was 29. 29. Yeah, I, I mean, I there just you. played. I was your ultimate grinder. I'm talking about cash games. I played tournaments here and there. Obviously, everybody played tournaments. You yeah. know, like tournaments came in, but even tournaments came in. I was looking to see like what, what the side game is going to look like. And most of the games limit hold them, limit stud, until uh, you know uh, a, a couple of years into it uh, that that we played some mixed games mm-hmm. and the horse came up. So like that's how you know, it was at the horseshoe. And uh, everyone was playing different games, and, and you knew like that there was this group from Akron, Ohio, that came and they loved to play Omaha. So people would they would play Hold'em with us, and some would be like, "Hey, you want to play Omaha? You want to play Omaha?" They would drag them out of the game. So, <laughs> so you know what? We'll play Omaha too. You want to play Omaha? Fine. Limit, you know, we'll play Limit Omaha, Limit Hold'em. That's how it started. And then Stud got in, and then Raz got in, and, and sure. there were all the five games that were you know prevalent those days got in, and they would put it on the board. 
And I looked at it one day and said, you know, we have the horseshoe. That spells, we can, we can, that spells horse. Hold on, Omaha Raz, the later better. And then some people that didn't like uh, Raz, they said, why don't we play shoe? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we were either playing horse or shoe during the World Series. So you're around for the... the how the how it got named? The, I named it. You course. named it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Named that's awesome. Know, like uh, uh, you guys don't know, Satellite Sam was the guy that would used to run the side games there, and uh, he said, "Oh, I like that." He went over and erased the board, <laughs> and they had like Raz, whatever. I put H O R S E. You know, like uh, that was that was that was the game. That's horse. Great. That's incredible. One thing I noticed about the mid '80s, you mentioned tournaments were like coming in or whatever. Uh, I was checking. You know your hand mob because I was curious, like when you cashed your first tournament back in the day, and it was it was eighty five, I think, uh, maybe eighty six, and uh, and I noticed it was the main event, ten k WSOP main event, and the min cash. I know people are always complaining about min caches being too small. Yeah, the min cash was less than the buy-in. The min cash was seventy five hundred. <laughs> Probably true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it took a while, and then first place, obviously, like. Yeah. All the money, All the, yeah. <laughs> three times second. I mean, I remember when I first moved here, talking to some some people that were around during that time, and they they were on they were a proponent of we're paying too many people and like whatnot. They wanted all the money up top. They wanted winner take all for some of these tournaments. Like I would talk to even people like Freddie D back in the day. I, I know he's not as old as you, but like Billy Baxter, they were like, no, we we won. If you won the tournament, you should get all the money. Like that was that was kind of the the sentiment. So like the the transition into paying more and. Paying more to like you know uh, sneak it into the money, I, I think it just comes with the I don't know the I guess the poker boom of like the young people coming in and wanting not to go broke right away. I don't know. Yeah, that just surprised me about the min cash being seventy five hundred for a ten k. Like even you coming you're coming in like top eighteen out of one hundred and fifty people and you're still not getting your <laughs> getting your money back. Yeah, you have to still get even. Yeah, um, which well, is funny because all the money was up top, but like you would think they would do two or three x for the min cash, but they're like, ah, let's keep some people no. in action. <laughs> We, we thought the whole purpose of the tournament were to have the tourists and the recreational players come to town. Mm -hmm. Because they played the tournament, but the cash games were like, there's so many cash yeah. games on the site. So like, you know, tournaments were fast mode, and then cash games started. And there was always like a couple of seats open for the champion. <laughs> but <laughs> like, if, if there was a stud event going, we were playing the cash game and stud and made sure like the seat was open in case, you know, like, you know how it is. When you win oh. a tournament, you feel like this is it. I'm the best in the world. Nobody exactly. can possibly beat me. What are you guys playing? Okay, yeah. I'm jumping yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> so like, that was always a good that's, thing. That's the, the tax. Yeah, you, yeah. you win a tournament, you have to give at least a quarterback to the cash game, whatever right. cash game you're playing in. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. It was a different world, that's for sure. Yeah, my, my first uh, World Series was in the Horseshoe as well, 2004, and I know that's quite a, quite a few years after this, but like I, I remember, same thing, getting in, in town and thinking I was just going to rest up for the main, and I ended up playing all night, 10-20 uh, limit, and I was just, I couldn't believe how good the game was. I just could not convince yeah. myself to leave. Like, I think I won like $7,000 playing 10-20. Like, over the course of the night, I was like, I'm kind of free-rolling this like main event. Oh, this is great. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and Look... I, we played, I mean, the cash game players never never thought much of, you know, tournaments. They yeah. never, because, you know, like, you, you do the math, and at the end of 12 <laughs> days or 14 days of World Series, when right. you're playing cash games, you're going to come up with more money than playing the tournament. Almost every time. What we didn't realize was somebody like Phil Helmuth at the same time, that was solely tournaments. The mm -hmm. world was going to change, and there's going to be so much side value for the tournaments. That was going to be just huge, and, uh, you know. Uh, he did it right. <laughs> what can I say? White magic. You know, it's yeah, white magic. Yeah, it's, it's positivity. Still, still there you go, right. Phil. <laughs> yeah. Phil did say he was going to come on our, on the podcast at some point. I know we keep on teasing this, but yeah. oh, we'll eventually Make sure get I'm on. there with him so I can get him going. <laughs> okay. I can get him going. Oh, Trust perfect. Me. I feel like almost anyone can get yeah. him going, actually, <laughs> from what I've seen on TV. That's true. That's true. But at, at some point in there, like... There's a crowd, obviously now, if you're looking around, people watching on YouTube, we are not in front of our normal table one green screen. Spoiler alert, it's a green screen, guys. Uh, we are in the beautiful Poker Go studios, uh, which uh, a lot of this is thanks to, you know, Maury and company uh, back in the day starting Poker After Dark and all the old shows that came during the online poker boom that people know and love. Like, when, when did that kind of production transition happened for you. I never ever want to take credit for all that, you know, is uh, somehow attached to my name because it came about with so many people, with so many things that was like beyond my understanding. <laughs> and seriously, it just like, it came so fast. 
But the whole thing got started with whole cans. Yeah. When my friend, you know, like we, uh, we made we made the seven card stud games that we played really fun. I mean, you uh, back in the days of Caesar's Palace, I can tell you guys so many stories from Caesar's Palace when we're playing the uh, seven card stud. It started at fifteen thirty, and all of a sudden there were literally 10, 15, 30 games. That's how Must Move got started because oh, we would make our game so much fun that people, you know, in the other games, like recreation, I want to play in that game. Put my name on the table 14 because they just saw laughter and laughter, you know, like, so, and, and so quickly, I want to say within six months, the games went from 15, 30 to 30, 60 to 50 and 100 to one and 200. <laughs> well, we had one and 200 stud and go back to now 1987, 86, we had like we would have four games, and then must move got to start crazy. because you know like uh, they, they would go there wow. and they start a game with with certain recreational players that were good for the game, and then we'll come in, uh, me and a couple of buddies that we, we were just really good combination making the game fun, and and the recreational players would jump, and you know the guys couldn't stand it, so right. like uh, that's how must move got to start and all that. So anyway, uh, <laughs> but but what I was trying to say, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was, to me, it was always playing the game. When the whole cards came, you know, like an outsider always thinks of something that insiders don't see. Yep. So Henry kept saying that, Henry Ornstein, who passed away last week, may rest, may rest in peace. He, he, he was like so convinced that, you know, you have to show players whole cards, otherwise, who wants to watch this thing on TV? <laughs> and there wasn't much poker on TV. It was like a one hour documentary from ESPN. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so him and I talked it over, talked over, and he says, just, you know what, just help me put this together. And I started talking, so I was, I've become pretty good friends with, you know, like the people that I played a little bit with, but I knew them real well, like Chip Reese and Doyle Brownsons of the world. And I knew if I get Chip and Doyle into this, rest will follow. People just followed what Chip and Doyle did those days. Mm -hmm. So I talked to them and convinced them. We paid them. We actually paid them $25,000 <laughs> to show their whole cards. That's a good way to convince me, too. <laughs> yeah. And I even remember these guys were rich at that time. $25,000 didn't mean much yeah. for them. But I remember them showing the checks to the other people and saying, hey, I'm getting paid to play poker and show my whole cards. So that, then, you know, like the first Poker Superstars championship that we put in had Chip, Doyle, Gus, Ivy, Barry Greenstein, Howard Letter, uh, T.J. Cloutier. So it was like who's who of poker, and they came in and they showed their whole cards. And the idea was the game to be seven card stud, so Henry could play too. He wanted to play. Oh, I see. But of course, yeah. you know, like uh, Mike Sexton's of the world and those days, they showed like the whole thing is about hold them. Just don't go there. So we went and. That's Let's start how, simple. Let's start with two right. cards, guys. <laughs> and and I, I came out helping. People knew I was involved. And then uh, they were doing some other shows. And I, I was like reached, hey, can you help in Union Plaza? We're doing something for Fox. And uh, well, I'm really busy. Like, we'll pay you. Come on, just come, hmm. come help for a couple of days. And next thing I knew, seriously, there were so many poker shows. They kept asking me to help that I just found out like 50% of my time is like traveling wow. and helping with these things. And I started, you know what? And then my wife told me, you always complain, you're so burnt out, you know, you plump playing. Why don't you, why don't you just go do this? So she was your impetus again, again for yeah. transitioning to a new so, level in so, your life. <laughs> so I actually remember again, sitting behind the, behind the editors, behind the producers, trying to show them, you know, like the, how the game is run, how it mm -hmm. should be filmed, because you know, you go to Hollywood, everything was like, oh, I remember like one hand was edited when the button in the middle of the hand jumped from two seat to five seat. <laughs> I said, but that can't happen. <laughs> they, and, and, the, and the producer said, only the poker players will notice that. <laughs> I said, no. It's a poker movie. <laughs> that can happen, yeah. okay? So anyway, um, that's how I got started. Like, I, I really wasn't <laughs> planning to become a producer or doing, you know, I was happy playing poker. But yeah, you just got... I wouldn't say lucky, but yeah, you were lucky to like the poker boom happened kind of around the same time where you were in demand. Like you, your your name is associated with this Ex this, this yeah. wonderful thing, the whole cam. Whole cams came in. We put the whole cam in. I still have the very first table in, in our warehouse uh, from, <laughs> from 1995. By the way, people don't know that. Oh, it was way I don't. Before we, we we got done with that, and the whole idea <laughs> was to have eight people play, four hundred thousand dollar buy in, seven card stud, and have. Parimutuel betting on it. 
So like that's a good idea. The whole like idea that. was like really nuts. And uh, trust, I mean, if you see this table, how much electronics are underneath this? Yeah. If you remember, like you could see cameras were underneath. There were mirrors that yeah. showed the picture of your whole cars, and the cameras were sitting underneath the table, capturing the mirror. And the whole thing was like very, you know, complex at that time. It's not as simple as this. Like these are all RFID table right. we are sitting on. There's no, there's no even cameras. There's no cameras. Yeah, it was. You want to get yeah. rid of the camera? Yeah, this, yeah, the, this does. And the whole thing is automated. You know, once you see the cards goes into the system and off we are running. At that time, you had operators putting the cards in and all that. So um, we uh, we we just thought, you know, like this is it. This is going to take off and getting it into TV part of it was still very difficult because, you know... Still, you yeah, know, no one liked poker. poker. <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone liked, everyone played poker, but I felt like there was a negative connotation with, with gambling. Like, you know, for some... Like, I know there's a big difference, but the... the I even remember growing up, I, I gambled with my family or whatever, but, like, other people would be surprised. It was like, no, what, that's awful. I was like, no, it's kind of like chess or any other game. We're just... Yeah. You know, we, we my family played chess for money and backgammon and stuff like that. So, right. like, I didn't see any different. It was a skill game for... For money. Of course. Yeah, I played uh, any sports that you, you name. <laughs> yeah. We play the golf for money. We play exactly. volleyball for money. We play Monopoly for money. But, you know, like, yeah, of course. But even, I mean, even partially to my family, like, they viewed poker as the same thing as roulette or blackjack or something like that, yeah. as opposed to, like I said, like, you know, chess or something like that. Because yeah. they're cards and yeah, chips. Exactly. Involved. You see cards and chips, you automatically assume it's gambling. Yeah. It, it, takes, it takes, still, we are trying to make sure the general public and the regulators understand how much skill is to this game. When somebody, I played for the 20 years, I had two losing quarters. That was my, like when I say I'm ultimate grinder, I was the ultimate grinder. Two, okay, That's that so impressive. That's so luck. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. people are playing and you know, when, when you need to you know, make money for your family and that's the only way that you can, you, turn into a really tough, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, I, I always tell people when, when, when my daughter was born, ace queen before the flop was not really a playable hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, nah, I'll just wait. I'll just wait for a better hand. That's yeah. So, so, what, so what, what happened? Was the breaking point where TV was more uh, receptive to, to the idea? Actually, uh, I would give credit to Steve Lipscomb because he came yeah. from the television world. Mm -hmm. he, he understood the TV part of it, the Discovery Channel that he was working. And uh, then we brought in, we brought up the uh, whole cards and they saw what we were supposed to do. And then uh, Poker Nights uh, in, in Europe, they were the first one to come to us and actually because we had a patent on it. Mm -hmm. They came to us and uh, licensed it and they aired something in England. That you remember, uh, Devilfish yeah, yeah. became famous off of it. It's a cash game, I believe. I think I, it was a cash I, game. I, I think you're right. Yeah. I think I've seen it. Yes. Right. So that's that was the very first time. Because so wait a second, you know that caught on, and then uh, Lyle Berman and Steve Lipscomb came and they, they did the same thing. They licensed it to do uh, the World Poker Tour, and Steve had all his connection at Discovery Channel, and here is a poker tournament at Discovery Channel, and all of a sudden everybody knows Discovery Channel, and it woke everybody up. So we had no problem almost immediately make a deal with NBC Sports and Fox. Sure. I'm talking about mothership, not, you know, like the main Fox and the right. main yep. NBC. And then and Heads Up Championship came right after that. And then GSN Game Show Network, you know, came up with the high stakes poker. They asked me if Cash Games has a chance. Of course, Cash Games. <laughs> how can Cash Games not have a chance? But, but, you know, like to your point, I was going to say the introduction to poker. I wish the introduction to poker started from 2003. Like how we did it, you know, people saw electrical engineers, computer programmers, they're playing poker. Mm -hmm. If you go back beyond the introduction to poker, always came through Hollywood movies. And, yeah. you know, yeah. like the movie Sting, the movie, oh, you know, Cincinnati Kid. Mm -hmm. Every movie that you saw poker was there. The shark was someone that, you know, like had something up their sleeve. And it was you know, a shady like, character, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. you know, that's so pe people like Poker Shark was not someone that knew the game was... Poker Shark just knew you were holding two tens. Yeah, they're were, they were hustlers. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. a mirror on the wall yeah. above above your hand, exactly. you know, that type so, of thing, yeah. Yeah, but that, that's still a struggle. I mean, it's still a struggle, but I mean, you all, I mean, you guys know that. Still, you know, like there's some family members of yours that, you know, when you talk to, I didn't know, my parents didn't know I was playing poker. I mean, they really didn't before yeah. until and maybe 10 years into it. They thought I was, I was working in the casino. That's all, all they thought, yeah. So... <laughs> 
Oh, I've, I've gotten the question. Did the, the casino just pay you for, for playing? I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> Actually, I pay them. They're like, well, how do you make money? Yeah. So um, I, I do remember the first time I saw a World Poker Tour, I was in a hotel actually going to a job interview. I was a graduated, it's going to be an engineer. And I, would, I drove down to, to uh, South Carolina for a job interview. I don't even remember what the company was. But I turned on the Discovery Channel. I was flipping through the channel right before I was going to go to bed. And I saw it. And I could not turn off the TV. And I ended up not going to bed till like 3 a.m. Because they had like back-to-back-to-back like mm -hmm. shows. And it made me late for my job interview, which... Probably the main reason why I didn't get the job or whatever, but uh, but yeah, like I I I think poker kind of uh, made me not want to be an engineer like long before I discovered poker. Like I mean, like trying to do it for a living anyway. It was. What they ask you? Why are you late? And we told him, well, you should see this program. I, I, I mean, it, like it's so fascinating. It was it was like a big group interview to start, and then they broke off into sections. But yeah, like I basically walk into like twenty five other engineers all yeah. there for the same job, and I'm the one. You know, at that time, longer hair yeah. and like, you know, old scraggly clothes probably because I couldn't afford anything. And just 20 minutes late and everyone just stares at me. I'm just, just walking <laughs> as quiet as I can and no one's saying a word and like I'm pretending like it didn't matter. But yeah, did, did, not, make the, uh, did not make the afternoon cut. I had to no. drive back uh, <laughs> to, to Raleigh uh, that afternoon. But I was so excited. I couldn't wait to tell people yeah. about like what I saw on the Discovery Channel. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sure you don't mind. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. No, no. I mean, if if you play poker, a you, you should obviously have to be good at it. Yeah, I mean, you can't yeah. just. You, I'm sure you're not telling your kids or your your family, hey, just you know, come on in. I wouldn't and tell anyone to do this. <laughs> exactly, they have to have certain characteristics. Yeah. And, and Doyle put it in a wrong, in, in a perfect way. They have to have a screw loose. That's somewhere. right. If they want to become a real good poker players, they have to have a screw loose somewhere. Because it takes that, it takes that, you know, to walk the edge and, you know, like being, you know, like here, here's, you know, like I'm putting my money out there uh, for, you know, uh, yeah. for, uh, uh, on a semi bluff or and something like that. Even my so, wife says, like, it's 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 a bit romantic, like the the putting it all on the line and like you knowing that you're right. you could you could lose it all, like you know, in the course of a day, a month, a year, or whatever it is, and like kind of like the old west cowboy yeah. stuff, like you know, you're risking it all to to kind of do what you want to. do. That's true, and if and if anything, like uh, poker has swung, at least TV poker has swung, the pendulum has swung fully from like the old west hustler gambler type yeah. to like, on TV now everybody's like it's very thoughtful, calculated, yeah. like yeah, yeah. it's a little slow, and that's actually what we're trying to do with our game and our channel and all that. Make make poker fun again is like one of our right. mantras that we that we think about every time we record, every time we are actually playing our game. We, we want to turn into the fifteen thirty stud game that you had, where like everybody wants to play with us, and like because there, there was, I can I can tell you right now. I mean, people have asked me before, how did you put the games together? Number one thing I thought of was how well the players mesh, because I knew they were like there were certain players. I'm sure the two of you in a game, if I come in there, you know, like in one of your games, the two of you are in there. There's not going to be a moment of silence between <laughs> you're going to say something because you know each other well and you yeah. know. And I can tell you so many stories from that three or four years of Caesar's Palace that we were playing the one or 200 games, whatever. Yeah, let's hear one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> On the spot, oh, let's go. Yeah, no problem. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, th there was this gentleman. I don't know if you guys know him. He passed away a few years ago. His name was Danny Robinson. He was actually Chip Reese's partner when they first came to town. Okay. Danny and okay. Chip. It used to be Chip and Danny. Then it became uh, Chip and Doyle. Uh, and uh, Danny was great seven card style player. You know, we all learned a lot from him, and we became really good friends. Him mm -hmm. and I. And our game when Danny and our, when we played in the same game, which we did every day for four years, there were fun games. There were like laughter, everything is going around. This one incident you're saying, you know, like it didn't really involve any recreational player. We were playing late into the night. It was like four o'clock in the morning that the game went on. Recreational players, tourists were gone. And uh, just it was the stuck just the people left. Just stuck people. Exactly. Exactly. But <laughs> yeah. well, wait a second. I've been there. You know that. Yeah. Stuck professional is a lot yummier mm -hmm. than, than, you know, any recreational that you know. You uh, get 100%. a pro stuck, yeah. you know, they, they, they just hand you a lot of money. <laughs> and we were playing this gentleman. I'm not going to mention his name. Just, just mention his first name, Tommy. And uh, he, he had this nervous habit, too. He had a comb in his back pocket. 
Mm-hmm. Every time like he'd get nervous, he'd take the comb out and comb his hair and put it back in. So um, obviously that was happening. Every hand he lost, or every time like he'd, he'd look at his card and he missed the flush, and you know, like you know, <laughs> not a tail you know, at all. Another, another like this is the sixteenth in a row I missed. Okay, I mean I hope you guys, you know, like he's going crazy, and uh, we are obviously loving it. You know, mm, let's yeah. go, Tommy, and uh, we are playing, and there was another. Uh, so it was me, Danny. Tommy and Sid the Kid and uh, Sid Sid the Kid was uh, uh, hunchback. He was he had a he had a, a hunch on his left side was hunchback. So if you if I was Sid, you called me. I had to turn around and look at you like this. Yeah. So he really didn't couldn't see what was happening there. He's he was, uh, but again you know like we're all playing, taking Tommy's money, <laughs> and this is four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and the cleaning crew comes in to the casino at that time, and there was an old lady. They came into the poker room at Caesars, and he, she had the vacuum cleaner. That she would take stuff out and start the vacuum cleaner, and that, she was way back in the corner of the poker room. But we could see Tommy turning around, looking at her every time she started the vacuum, you know. <laughs> and they're like, he's all upset. And uh, Danny looked at me, and I looked at him. I he didn't have to say one word, you know. We were like, I knew exactly what was going to happen. He took a <laughs> he I, took I a you. green chip from his his stack. He walked up. Tommy can't see it. She's back there. Tom, Danny walked over to the, to the lady and gave her the $25 chip and gave her explicit instructions. And I could see her, like, ex- explain to her. And came back and sat down. We were playing. And next thing we knew, she was coming closer and closer <laughs> to, to our table. I thought you were going to and, and, and Tommy, quit. Tommy is going absolutely nuts. Tommy's going, you know, like, keep looking at her. Like, now she's been in, like, 10 feet of her and just going around. And, 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 and she's vacuuming the place. And Tommy's going crazy. And finally, she comes over and, again, you know, Tommy's Tommy's like oh. not expecting this. She comes over and taps Tommy. In the oh chair. no! She goes, "Sir, would you mind moving your chair so I can vacuum under the table?" <laughs> that, that's what. So I can vacuum under the table. That's good value for twenty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Now, at, at that time, smoking was allowed, and mm-hmm. so ashtrays. Yeah. Tommy got so upset <laughs> that he took the ashtray. He just, he just, he like just slammed it in the, in the bottom, of the, you know, under the table. He goes, here, clean this. There's nothing in there. And Sid, the kid, had no idea, like, what just, he, he just heard a bang. He just got up and started, like, and trying to run away from the table. I mean, Danny and I were laughing so hard. And, of course, Tommy, once we started laughing that hard, he knew that he got set up. It was like perfect, That's but good. you know, I mean, look, things like that <laughs> somewhat happens now on TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. like not exactly that, but but when people are having fun playing poker. Yeah. It's so much more watchable, yeah, and you know, becoming sure. a statue. And that's one of the things about the Poker Go Studio that I love is that like it's kind of bringing that element back to poker. I don't know, maybe it's just everybody's kind of getting aware that like, oh hey, people maybe don't want to play with you if you're going to stare at them for you know a minute and all that, but uh, but no, a lot of the final tables that I've seen on Poker Go and like just all the obviously all the high stakes poker that's coming right. back and all that stuff. The uh, the sentiment is it's coming back. The having fun at the table, it's definitely making its return. Of course, <laughs> yeah, you have to let the players bring in their their core group because once you, once that happens, then you know nobody's going to be offended if you slow roll them or you say something yeah. funny. You know, like it's all fun and games. There. Yeah, I mean, I I was fortunate enough to play obviously no gamble no future and like poker after dark before that, but like I was apprehensive, I guess, when the high rollers started coming through. I was like, oh, man, a bunch of you know, yeah. like robots. I was like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is not going to be fun at all. And like, I finally, like, Carrie, uh, Katz convinced me to do it. And I was like, okay. And I couldn't believe, like, even the people I considered robots, this is such a nice environment that they, uh, they just, everyone loosened up and they would talk. And like, when, you know, serious hands happen, they, you know, they'll, they'll go back to their, their other state. But like, it was so nice. It's, it's very refreshing to see the robots kind of like be a, a person as opposed to just right. like these, these serious moments. I understand they're still playing for a lot of money and the final tables are a bit different than like, you know, the first hour in, but man, this, I mean, it, re- it really is uh, nice what you and like Carrie have like kind of like put together here. Well, I've considered myself like two, two, uh, 
two persons in, in, in my production and poker, you know, a behind the scene career was Henry Ornstein and Carrie Katz. Mm. It was it was just, you know, if poker got kind of lucky when, you know, people with their statures and their means fell in love with the game so much. Henry was in love with seven card stud and Carrie, you guys yeah. know how much he loves poker. And then, you know, like he, he uh, when he, he he kept telling me like you're always going from one casino to another casino. Let's have our, let's just have your own place, and look at this place. I, I mean, <laughs> like this game, this game. This is like a, every time I walk in here, I feel like I'm gonna wake up and, and yeah. find out. Oh, it, it, it still turns into those galleries, the photo photo gallery, and everything yeah. else that was here. And uh, yeah, it's it's been amazing. Uh, I remember, gosh, this is probably 2012. Uh, Carrie was playing every Venetian tournament and like whatever, any like $400 tournament and like me and him got to be pretty good friends and like uh, Eric Baldwin the same way and he would take us out to dinner just like kind of pick our brain either to get better at poker or like how poker's gonna move forward and I'm pretty sure he like pitched this idea to us and we were just like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> that's not gonna work at all. Like, I mean, no one's no one's gonna do that. Yeah. And like looking back, I'm, I, I hope he remembers this but like, yeah, I'm sure he's laughing. Like, but like yeah. this is, this is, Literally, I, I couldn't imagine anything better for poker right now. Yeah. Um, little known fact, though, for those out there, Carrie Katz and Maury share the same birthday. Uh, that is true. That was, that was pretty strange. So, like, uh, January 29th, uh, <laughs> it's a very special day. And just to let everyone know, I also have that birthday. Really? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Somebody was telling me that uh, in a group of, if you take a group of random 30 people, mm -hmm. there's 50% chance that two persons will have exactly the same um, you know, yeah. day and month birthday. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, sure they've done, done the calculus. Fifty percent chance. Yeah, that, that is crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. Some diminishing returns there. But yeah, it, it, it is crazy. Like I knew Carrie and I figured this out a long time ago, but I was so excited when I found out that we, we share the same birthday. I think Carrie actually told me like five years ago. I was like, wow. Can you imagine? All right, so from here on out, yeah. Poker's birthday is January 29th. Well, I, I think I'm the run of the litter. I, I need to find someone else. <laughs> Here, that or I need to get busy being successful. <laughs> You're the 30th guy in the room, Justin. <laughs> So this this idea, this whole studio, you uh, Carrie's baby, but you're what you had a huge part of the design. One hundred percent Carrie's baby. He wanted to make this happen, yeah. and uh, we were not. This was obviously the last place that we thought that we would be coming in and putting a Poker Go studio. Yeah, was in, in a shopping mall okay. right outside of Aria. Yeah. Uh, one person that we owe a lot of gratitude to is Bobby Baldwin. So, oh, you know, right. you guys know how much yeah. he loved poker. And uh, we, we came to him and we were like saying that, okay, you know, we're always going from, uh, you know, one casino to another casino, one ballroom to another ballroom. And uh, the ballroom, you know, business of convention business became big business for casinos. And when I needed like two weeks of convention, they would do it, but it was getting harder and harder. So like, you know, like you take, usually when you're renting, like you're taking over a, a convention space, yeah. you're also getting a thousand room nights that people are sure. coming in for that. Yeah. That wasn't us. Not only we were not looking to pay, we were saying, okay, this will be a marketing deal for you. We'll promote the shows, obviously, and every, you know, your casinos will be promoting the shows day in, day out, every time they go out there and, and all that. But uh, they... At some point, the, the mathematics of it didn't make sense to them. So it was getting harder and harder. So I had a tough time doing it. And we talked to, um, uh, you know, we were talking to several different people, you know, where can we come, different casinos. And when one was uh, Bobby, who, who was a friend from the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, played in there. We actually took over a watch shop. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, I played in there. Yeah, you yeah, did. Okay. I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our control room was in a closet. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not you're like literally in the closet. So, uh, and, and we put a stage there, and and then worked from there, and then, you know, like okay, this is obviously not enough. You know, like we're gonna have a tournament going. It still has to happen in the poker room, and the filming is gonna be here. It's a little it's bit. Tough. So we went on and on and on, and uh, looking for a place, and then this idea came from him. He says, "Well, those." Look at those shops, see if that would work. I came and looked at him and said, he, this is amazing. I mean, seriously, like we can have one of these. So we talked to the, some of the store owners, like one of the store owner moved to the front 
uh, and, and you know another store owner moved another place and then we knocked the walls down and then like this area that we are sitting was actually like nothing but a storage we had to raise the floor so millions of dollars were spent mm -hmm. thanks to Carrie to uh, make this suitable you know for where we were doing shows and you know like it was good with gaming and everything else so cool that's such yeah. a good like Cinderella story of how Poker Go came to be. We have a we have a video that I did like a few months ago where it's like the four levels of luck we call it, uh -huh. where like once and networking is a huge part of it, where you like you just you have make these friends along the way, and then you never know when it's gonna you're gonna be called on for like your you know calling or whatever, like somebody coming to you and saying like, hey, what about these shops? I run this whole casino. You know, would you like to be here? And I mean, that would have never happened if you hadn't been playing poker all through the '80s exactly, and and yeah. known all these people. That's, so, that is poker does poker. a lot for that, like getting getting eight guys at the table and from all different walks of life being able to meet people is something that I didn't ever think of when I was in my 20s. And like now, in my late 30s, I'm just realizing finally that like, oh man, just these relationships are so yeah, like important. Yeah. Not not just from like a not not just from a friendship perspective. You get just a lot of like future life value out of being out of just being friendly and being being friends with people. So take that as a lesson out there, guys. Just <laughs> be like Maury. <Maury's>, yeah? <laughs> be friendly and then uh, tilt Tommy if it's late at night and he's buried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, never I never had, had that, had that problem. problem. I didn't, I didn't have, have to, to like, like do any, you know, <laughs> call <him. laughs> That was a good. Poor Tommy had to like. Pull out a rag. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Oh, yeah. So what's, uh, what's the future of... Uh, of poker go look like i see you have a lot more uh this this table is really nice in here this this used to just be like you said storage and yeah. then yeah, this, this is the final Airbnb tables are now yeah. even yeah. even when this got you know when we started this room that we are in was uh just for break desk mm -hmm. so when we were doing major events the players went on break you know you can't go on a break so we bring you know we brought the players here okay. just to talk to them and all that this got renovated last year so now it's a smaller studio for mainly the main purpose of this room is put shows on YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, as you can see, the cameras are all. Oh, know, they're great. Yeah, there's a smaller cameras. They're all robotic. They're hanging from the ceiling. So it's. Just yeah, I should have just emailed advanced. you. We didn't have to bring in our our <laughs> yeah, heavy equipment. Yeah. We could have just. Our, uh, we have oh, a high quality camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of our cameras. <laughs> no. No. It's a, a Pell. Oh, Apple. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Well, uh, look, look. Future of poker is is going to depend on the regulators. That's Sorry. like next boom will come when people finally start working in Washington D.C. and, and allow Texas Hold'em to become legal in Texas. I'm talking about online, yeah, uh, like it is in Germany. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's uh, it's weird that you know we have we just are not there yet. I thought for sure by now we're there. All these years you were playing poker with casino owners, you should have been playing with senators. Yes. That's <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is weird to me that uh, DFS, uh, Daily Fantasy Sports, yeah. got the nod over poker like for legality and like, nationwide like sports betting but yeah, like, i mean is that, it 38, that, 38 that, states it's yeah. like they they're they're, yeah. they're promoting that it's gambling yeah. and they get it through and poker's claiming it's a skill sport and or game and we generally can't get anything done yeah, it, it, it's kind of crazy to me it's moving really slow but i'm i mean there's there's no way it's not going to happen exactly it, it yeah. is going to happen and once that happens the next boom for poker will sure come. and it'll be whatever the same 10 or eight states that we're going to say no to it which is fine that's that's gonna be fine but like yeah it's, so we just need one of the shoes to drop uh whatever whether it be california texas whatever and then california, be easy. yeah right when we played poker World Series. I'm going back 1985, 86, whatever. Like those those years, eight bracelet events and main events. That was it. And the main event hit like 120 people. We were like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> this is the most amazing thing. And we never ever thought main event would go over 10,000 players like it did last year. And there is no doubt in my mind we are going to see a main event of 50,000 players in my lifetime. Wow. Well, it just needs for it to open yeah. up. Once, once, once it yeah. opens up and people are qualifying online to send satellites send, run every day no, across the country. You made yeah. fifty bucks. Yeah, you right. know, like you're putting fifty dollars, not ten thousand buying. You're just like keep trying to win your way to come here, 
And uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know how casinos are going to handle it, but I think it's going to happen. Yeah, you're right. Money, money Maker was 2003, and then we had like a nice on ramp of right. like six, seven yeah. years, and then it just got cut yeah, in Yeah, Black Friday obviously like hurt everybody. Like, I mean, to, to your point, like, I, I, I think I qualified for the 2007 World Series uh, in the $33 like satellite tournament. Like, but I was online. Like, I think it was Poker, it was poker Stars. Right. So, like, it was. I mean, I was one of hundreds of people that got to qualify through thirty-three dollars. Now, granted, I would have bought it anyway, but at the same point, probably like most of those players that threw in thirty-three dollars, no course. chance that you're gonna like throw in the ten k. No, no. So it's. I can see it. I can see it. Like main event is two weeks. Yeah, two weeks is day one. Now what? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you almost have to yeah. just like uh, branch it out to like if it's gonna stay in Harris, like every Harris property needs to host like the day right. one at the same time. Or they do it downtown, like we we, uh, yeah. we had one idea when Oscar Goodman was the mayor and he was saying that he'll, he, he'll even help us to bring uh, tables from China, you know, to where we wanted to have the biggest uh, uh, shuffle up and deal live with oh. 10,000 players at the same time. So we had like the entire streets under Fremont Street and everything like poker tables and we had the, you know, we put the drawing together and he saw it. And you know he was passionate for downtown. We said, okay, yeah. this is going to be the next poker tournament, where ten thousand people are going to be like at the same time play the hand. So I mean, like, yeah, people are going to come up with ideas, but I can see a main event of five hundred million dollar total prize pool. That'd be insane. That might take that might take like all of Europe plays at the same time, and then they <laughs> then they send their best after. Yeah. You know, they're down to ten percent. All right, you guys come to Vegas <laughs> to finish it out. How much would the first place be? If it's five hundred million. Uh, I mean, no. no. <laughs> No public math. I got a firm policy. <laughs> At least, oh jeez, yeah. a lot. Holy cow! <laughs> Sorry, I just. Uh, and you uh, ended up like a forty million dollar first place. Yeah, I was, I was about have, to say fifty, but it sounds yeah. so big. But it's, it's got to be right. Imagine what yeah. kind of noise that would make. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Like I mean, now like I know uh, the one year they they gave uh, said ten million dollars to first place when Jamie Gold won. I believe yeah. it was, uh, right. yeah. and I got so much like press coverage, and now like. The big thing is like everyone that makes the final table gets at least a million dollars, and like I mean, that's so much more important. Like the, I think the payouts are a bit gimmicky, but it's so nice that for advertisement. But like, of course, you play this and you don't have to win; you yeah. can make a million dollars. Yeah, you're a million dollars. Million just make the final table, yeah. Oh, man. So, um, speaking of final tables, uh, I got the pleasure of watching you at one of the uh, PGT mixed game series. <laughs> Uh, just just whoop up on some of these young kids that uh, no one's ever heard of, like Jeremy Osmus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody's ever heard of him. No. I, I mean, look, I never, ever have time to play. I really don't. I mean, uh, these tournaments takes two days. Mm -hmm. And you have to come in thinking that you're going to win it, obviously. Sure. Yeah, so I'm just going to play four hours tournament like I come over here <laughs> yeah. again. I'm just going to play three hours and gone. <laughs> but yeah. So it can't happen. And they, they kept asking because some of, the, some of the guys know that the horse was something that I was... Pretty much the inventor about. of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, kept, they kept saying, "Are you going to play?" You won your tournament. Play? And I told Ben, and he, he made the final table. He finished third. I told him, you know, I can't play because if I play, there'd be no hole cards. I mean, like I'm going to ruin the stream because that is the only way. Even if I, when I play WSOP, we already agreed to talk to Jack Effel. If I make the final table, there is no cameras. You're playing with regular deck of cards, mm -hmm. not RFID, nothing. Why does that apply to you? Uh, only? Just because I have. I have so much access. If he to wanted so to be a scumbag, he I could mean, be a look, scumbag. Uh, uh, all not. it takes for me to lay the jacks down in the right place, you know, like, yeah. or, 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 you know, like uh, throw a flush, a second flush away, whatever, like, and it's right. Mm -hmm. If it is wrong, no problem. <laughs> if it is right, oh, right. I, see I can the just scrutiny. see people, yeah. you know, like people that are sitting there have nothing to do. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you have <laughs> the do. patent on the table, yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I, I just rather not play anything that's ever been filmed. But if I ab absolutely get the itch, or like I'm, I want to play it, like it's, it's one of my games from the past, like seven card stud. If I make the final table, okay, we can air it, but there's going, going to be any, any whole cards. We like we moved the time back to uh, 25 years ago, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago. And, so. and to your credit, and uh, I, I think the commentator said something. I, I didn't have the audio uh, the whole time, but every time you want a hand, you would just turn your hand over. I tried to show as many which, hands, which is amazing. So like you're you're still giving all the information to yeah. the public as as possible, but you're also kind of giving up maybe a little bit of information to some of these scrubs I, like Jeremy Osmus. I never cared. As, I mean, look. <laughs> If you guys play enough poker to know that there's not one way of playing a hand. Right. When you're giving your opponents multiple choice, uh, you know, like there's eight different ways to play a hand. So what that you should, I mean, that was that was the argument I made back in, uh, in 1998 when I was talking to the guys. You seriously think you turn over? 
if you turn your over your hand and your game is exposed, you have one gear. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> that, that's a problem. You need to have more. You have to add more gears to exactly. Your game. Yeah. If, it, if yeah. you're if you're that funneled, then yeah. like you're probably not good at poker anyway. Exactly. I, a good friend of mine, Joe Tehan, he would he would sit down and said, "I'll show my hand to everyone here if they all chip in a big blind." And they would, everyone would just throw him the, the ten dollars or twenty dollars, right. and he would just show his hand every single time. The rest of the day, yeah, like, one payment up front, and he'll just like, show it all day. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do with these cards. Like, of how course. are they going to figure it out? No. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of our producers put it in in, in a really clever way. Uh, our, there's a producer that's been work, working with me since uh, 2005, 2006. Dan Gotti, he's he's the main producer for World Series. He's he is the mastermind of a lot of stuff that we do here as far as production. And he put in a really nice way. He said, because he started playing poker. He's like, you know, like you can't produce and watch you guys play and not fall in love with it. So he comes and plays. He says, you know what I realized? You watch all these great players play. Nobody's seen more hands than Dan Gotti. Nobody. Because mm -hmm. not only he's producing it, then he's involved in post-production. He's like watching it again before it goes to the network. So he's seen it hands. He says, it's like looking at this maze from up above. And you see how people are getting out of the maze. Then they drop me in the maze, in the middle of the maze. I'm lost again. Where, where, yeah. Which direction do I go? And he said, it's exactly like that. I sit in the poker table, and I'm still lost. Really, I've seen them, how they play. They're like, okay, now what do I do? Yeah, exactly. So, are you going to try to emulate Stephen Chidwick, or are you going to try to emulate, whatever, uh, Ben Samani? Like, right. I mean, like, they're slightly different, and they both are That's winning close. players. It's right. So anyway, I mean, the guys that play, and I was jokingly told them, I'll play, but there's 98% chance I'm going to be at the final table <laughs> ruin this. So they, started all, they all started laughing. Of course, cars came my way, hmm. and I wouldn't know what to do. I may not know what to do in some of the games that I don't play, if I, even if I get hit with the deck. But if I get hit with the deck in a horse. Yeah, a lot, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people you played against didn't know that you were, you know, grizzled veteran of horse of 25 plus years exclusively before you even got into producing. He, he I invented can horse. In the yeah. day, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know you'll beat a scrub like Jeremy, but like, I mean, if you had a tougher opponent, you still think you would have beat him? I don't think there was anyone in the world that would have been able to like overcome Sorry, I the Jeremy. Russian cards. I know. I just no, go, I, I watch yeah. it. Like, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you held over for sure, but yeah. still it was... Be yeah. good feeling getting in there. Of course, yeah. of course, yeah, it is. Are Tournaments you, are fun. Yeah. There's no question. Are you uh, planning anything for the World Series? I know it's a uh, kind of around the corner anyway. Yeah, we we are going to have more uh, live streams from the World Series. Mm -hmm. We're adding more bracelet events. We are adding, uh, you know, the middle t middle section that's horseshoe table. We call it. There's mm -hmm. going to be nonstop action from there. So th there's going to be a lot. Uh, broad, being broadcast from World Series this well, year. Will it just be final tables, or you said final tables? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sometimes there's day twos of some sure, games, okay. like the Players Championship. You know, okay. like those, those will happen. Uh, may, maybe the big buy-in events, the mega events, two fifty, mm -hmm. two hundred fifty thousand buy-in, all that. Day twos will happen, but most other races will be the main uh, outside the main event. Obviously, uh, we do many days, but. Uh, the bracelet events will be the final table. Well, if you find a day where there's nothing going on on there, you know, maybe in the morning, you know, table one might want to come and play and <laughs> yeah, be on yeah. be on TV on the uh, <laughs> on the WSOP. I emailed someone from over there and they said that they don't do the they don't do the reserve tables at the WSOP, and I was like, well, I guess uh, you're not going to help make poker fun over there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, table one, but your game is fun. Your game reminds me of the old, you know, like old days uh, of, of poker. That's fun. It's good to come in there and know people, know each other, and then going at each other. That's kind of fun. I appreciate that. It, it, it definitely is our goal to make it as, as fun as possible yeah. over there. Uh, you do, um, you do, so this, this table is for YouTube. You did the, was the StormX cash game? Was that on this table? There was, there was one, uh, uh, single table that uh, we call it uh, uh celebrity poker tour so the that was in here yes it was okay. in stormix it was celebrity poker tour. this is only a month old or is this, that what you said two months this is this is started this year so it's like two or three months yeah it's like three months uh, old. We've, been, yeah. we've been doing from here yeah starting january we started experimenting okay so where do you hide uh brent and company when uh <laughs> brent, when they brent have and, to do brent and company <laughs> are <over> still <laughs> in the same you know uh in the talent booth outside of here Oh, wow, that's really nice of you to call it the talent booth. <laughs> Sorry, Brent. Love you. No, no, Jeff, oh, no, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Latt's Jeff Jeff in there. Yeah, yeah. Jeff, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, never mind. Jeff, you're fine. You're fine back there. No, love you too. <laughs>
So are you going to be playing any of the World Series events? Like, uh, I'm... I always try to play a couple, you know, two or three. I, I love to play, you know, two or three. But I, I, I stay away from anything that, you know, like, it will be a shame. <laughs> this was like Daniel Negreanu made the final table. We had no hole cards <laughs> right. in the horse. So that was like, that, that is a bad part. Yeah, for sure. So, like, is that, I don't believe, I, correct me if I'm wrong, have you ever played the 50K uh, Players no, Champion? Is, is that the main reason why that not? Is, that is, yeah. like, it makes sense. that is something it's... that must get aired. You know, yeah. it's a shame for that, you know, not, not to get brought but still, I mean, that's got to be on your bucket list. At, at least part of your body really wants to play that. I mean, that's... Right. And, 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 you know, when you're not playing poker for a living, uh, putting 50,000 is kind of... Uh, you know, like, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, it I is be, a lot, but I want to be so focused. I have nothing to worry about. No emails, no text, no, you know, uh, no, no, no hanging, you know, loose yeah. ends to tie, you know, like that stuff in your head is not good when you're playing tournaments. You really have to be focused. Especially with one of that kind of buy. I mean, the, right. the talent you're going to be. Of course. Not a lot of Jeremy yeah. Osmosis there. One day. Yeah. Well, one of these. When I retire, I will play that event one time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. All I, I gotta do is play it one time. Then I win it, yeah. and I have to play it like every year. Right? <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. It, I mean, I know it's on my bucket list, and like I, yeah. I need to kind of shake the rust off my mixed game. But yeah. like I, I want to do it. Yeah. I, I, I tell everybody the reason I haven't won the main event of World Series is because I can't play it. <laughs> if I play it, I win it for sure. First year. <laughs> wow. So when's the last year you did play it? Wow. It, it had to be in the '80s. Wow. I think. Uh, it, it, 80s or 90s, definitely early 90s, maybe. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, Jim Bechtel won it. Okay, the that's that 93 I, or 94. Yeah, 93, Jim Bechtel won it, I and, I, and I was actually uh, made it to the second table. There were two tables left, and I even remember the hand that I got busted out. I had ace-queen against ace-ten, and the door card was a queen. Door card was a queen against ace-ten, and came nine-jack. <laughs> the ten you should have listened to your past self telling your uh, telling yeah, your daughter about not playing ace queen. Exactly. But, but she was she was much older then, you know. <laughs> she didn't need to know anymore. Yeah. Not quite old enough for grandchildren. Uh, or you had that ace queen money then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should have. I should have. Like, good advice. All I had to do was throw that away, and I would have won it. <laughs> I mean, those days. I'm sure it's the same as these days. Every beat that you took in a tournament that you got busted. It was for the main price, for the, you know, like, I, I agree. Of sure. course, I would have won it if I didn't have that uh, set crack. I just, I just bubbled the PLO last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just lost out on probably like $150,000. Because, like, I was 70, <laughs> I was 70, 30, 70% 70 to win and yeah. couldn't hold. Yep. Yeah, 70% to get the trophy, even though he bubbled the tournament. <laughs> bunch, bunch of slums in there, you know. I, even I, I, I ran them over. In front of me. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I think Ben Lambs at the final table, Josh Aray, Bruno uh, for like I mean, at least one guy who's rocked the uh, table one patch yesterday is is in today. Yeah, Bruno, Bruno, he's he he wore it for us. <laughs> I wonder if he'll of his own volition come and come with it on again. <laughs> well, we'll see. Which yeah. seat is going to be sitting in? You guys can always pour some ketchup in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we could just we, we should just sprinkle too. these on everyone's seat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Little uh, welcome table. You got to wear this if you're at the final yeah. table, guys. And by the way, we do appreciate you letting us film in yeah, here. This is really course. cool. Yeah. Of course. Well, it was easy for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> a guy. To you. you know yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys came to me. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else uh, you want to promote before we let the people, you know, tune out and tune into Mr. Beast well, or whatever they're doing on YouTube these days? <laughs> Just keep playing the game. There there's, there's no game like it. That's a great message. Any any big uh, Poker Go series coming up after this PLO one? That U.S. Poker Open. U.S. Poker US Open. U.S. Poker Open. Jacket, is, right? Is or is that the Masters? No, no that's, that's the Masters. masters. Okay. When, when does that start? Uh, starts uh, about 10 days from now. Okay. And the, the buy-ins range from? Uh, the the buy-in range from 10,000 to, uh, I think, 50,000. Yeah, I think, I think 50 is right. So, 10,000 buy-in, guys. You can still come out here. It's it's a good tournament. It's a great, great yeah. venue. And I mean, I can play. I, I I tell people that are fans of poker, they should swing by. The, the doors are open. There are security guards. You can't go in there and, like, play if you don't put up the money. But check out the studios. Yeah. And, like, you can see your favorite poker player generally, this, like, playing every day. And This is not invitational. Tournaments are open for everyone That's that right. wants to come and play. People always tell me, hey, can yeah. I come play that? Yes, you can. Tournaments are open. It's only cash games that we do. Uh, that's right. that's what by invitation, and you know we try to uh, reserve seats for people. 
But tournaments are open, all open events. Yeah. Come on down if you got $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and if you've made it this far, then you know what I'm about to say, Justin. If you're a true fan, then you have to do what we call the degenerates agreement. Uh, we can't enforce it. We don't know if you do it. But just like your backer that you told you lost aces to kings the last time you played, uh, you got to click that subscribe button so that we believe you. Uh, so subscribe, like, and follow us on Twitter yeah, at Poke Table One Vegas. Tell two of your friends. Two of your friends, two of your enemies. Dislikes are worth just as much as likes, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I don't write the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's the podcast. Hey, me and my buddy, buddy, we make it all of this money. Yeah. I know it's rude to be bragging. Hey. They never catching a slag. Hey. Me and my buddy, we work hard.